Hello viewers, in this video we are going to discuss serializability concept. Specifically, we are going to discuss config serializability and view serializability techniques. Actually, serializability, it is the process used to find if the given non-serial schedule is a serializable schedule or non-serializable schedule. Usually, we can classify the non-serial schedule into two types. Serializable schedule and non-serializable schedule. Usually, this serializable schedules provides consistent result. That is, its result is equivalent to the result of its transactions executed serially. Okay, whereas coming to non-serializable schedule, it always gives inconsistent result. That is, its result is not equivalent to the result of its transactions executed serially. So, this non-serializable, non-serial schedule, since it produces inconsistent result, this type of non-serializable schedule should not be permitted to execute. That's why serializability concept is used to find out whether the given non-serial schedule is serializable or not. We can check the given non-serial schedule as serializable or not by using two serializability techniques. One is conflict, another one is view serializability. Now we are going to discuss about these two serializability techniques with examples. Let's discuss conflict serializability. Conflict serializability, it is one type of serializability technique which is used to check whether a given non-serial schedule is conflict serializable or not. It performs this process by converting the given non-serial schedule into serial schedule by swapping its non-conflicting operations. Let's check what are the conflict operations and non-conflict operations now. Here, if two transactions are performing operations on the different data items, then those operations are known as non-conflict operations. Because the transactions are doing operations are different data items, right? It nowhere violate the consistency property. So, the operations which are performed on different data items are usually non-conflict operations. If suppose the two transactions are performing operations on the same data item, then there is a possibility for being conflict and non-conflict. Okay, so we can check either the operations which are performed on the same data item or conflict or non-conflict using four cases. If suppose two transactions are performing read and read operation on the same data item, then these that is known as non-conflict operation. That is any number of transactions can be permitted to do read operation on the same data item at the same time. Even they are permitted also, it never violates the consistency property of transaction. Whereas, if any one of the transaction performs write operation, then that is known as conflict operation. Here you see, here T2 is performing a write operation and T1 is performing a read. Uh, since T2 is performing write operation, it is known as conflict. And here in this case also, T1 is doing the write operation. So, it is a conflict operation. And in the fourth case, both transactions are doing a write operation on data item Q. So, this is also conflict operation. So, what are the non-conflict operation students? If two if more than one transaction performs operations on the different data items, then that is known as non-conflict operations. Similarly, if more than one transaction performs a read operation on the same data item, then 
that is also known as con non conflict operation let us discuss conflict serializability with an example here this is what the given non serial schedule s1 okay here this is non serial schedule um, how come it is known as non serial schedule here before the completion of t1 t2 is permitted to execute right so that is why it is known as non serial schedule so according to conflict serializability to determine whether the given non serial schedule is conflict serializable or not we have to swap the non conflict operation after swapping if we could able to make the serial equivalent of this then it is known as conflict serializable schedule okay so let us try to swap the non conflict operations in t1 and t2 here these two operations are non conflict though these two are t1 and t2 are performing the read operation on different on same data item a they read and read never violate the consistency so it can be swapped so now after swapping this read operation comes up and this read operation goes down so now this is the intermediate result of this non serial schedule then after this let us try to swap these two since t1 and t2 performs read operation on different data items it is also non conflict so it can be swapped successfully okay then after swapping we will get this the result of this schedule non serial schedule will be like this then to get the serial equivalent of this one more step is required that is it has to come down and it has to go up right so either these are conflict or not let us check here both t1 and t2 are performing read and write operation on different data items okay so irrespective of any operation if transactions are performing operations on different data items obviously they are non conflict so these two can be successfully swapped so after swapping we will get the serial schedule like this here this is serial schedule how come because all operations in t1 are executed first and after the completion of it operations in t1 is permitted to execute that's why it is a serial schedule so this is the serial equivalent of this non serial schedule okay since this non serial schedule s1 is converted to serial schedule s2 successfully by swapping its non conflict operations s1 is a conflict serializable schedule that is this non serial schedule s1 will not violate the consistency of database if permitted to execute okay students i hope you understood what is conflict serializability and one more point uh, non serial schedule is known as conflict equivalent of serial schedule if it can be successfully converted to serial schedule by swapping its non conflict operation okay so in such case we can say the given non serial schedule is the conflict equivalent of its serial schedule okay let us now discuss view serializability with an example view serializability it is also one type of serializability technique which is used to find out whether the given schedule is view serializable or not if a schedule is view equivalent to its serial schedule then it is view serializable okay let us now check what is view equivalent what are the conditions to be satisfied to determine whether the shed, given schedule is view equivalent of its serial schedule or not let us now discuss two schedules 
S1 and S2. Whereas S1 is non-serial schedule and S2 is serial schedule. Okay. Two schedules, non-serial and serial schedules are said to be view equivalent if they satisfy the following conditions. That is, if in both schedules, S1 and S2, the transactions that perform initial read, final write and update read operations on each data item or say. Okay. So, you can understand this very clearly when we discuss with an example. Okay. Here, this is what the given non-serial schedule. Now, we are going to check whether the given non-serial schedule is view serializable or not. So, to determine either it is view serializable or not, three conditions need to be satisfied. Okay. What are the three conditions? Initial read, final write and the update read on each data item must be done in both the schedules by same set of transactions. Okay. So, that's what we are going to uh, check now. Here, what are the two data items are here? Uh, e and B, right? So, these two are the data items uh, are used in this schedule okay here a a here a a here b b b b so uh, totally there are two data items are used in this schedule okay let us check uh, which transaction performs initial read final write and update read on these data items here on a who performs initial read t1 right initially who performs the read operation on a t1 then who performs the update read on A? Update read, it means after the write operation, who performs the read? Okay. So, after the uh, write operation on A by T1, T2 reads its value. So, update read operation is performed by T2. Then, who performs the final write on A? There are two write operations, but final write is performed by T2. So, accordingly, if we check on data item B, initial read is done by T1, update read is done by T2, and final write on B is done by T2. So, now we have to check either the same set of transaction performs these operations in serial schedule also on each data items. Okay, this is the serial equivalent of this non-serial schedule, right? So, how how we got this? Simply, we arranged all the operations in T1 first and followed by that all the operations in T2 must be uh, written subsequently, okay? But there should not be any overlap between the operations of T1 and T2. Then only it is known as serial schedule, right? Okay. Let us now check initial read, update read, final write on A and B, okay? Here, who performs the initial read on A? T1. Okay. Update read on A is performed by T2, right? So, after the write on A, T2 performs the read operation. Then, who performs the final write on A? So, there are two write operation on A. So, final write is performed by T2. So, very similarly, even in, even on uh, B also, T1 performs the initial read, T2 performs the update read, T2 performs the final write. So, here we got this set of operations. Okay, here let us now check either the same set of operations performs initial read, update read, final write on A in both the cases. Yes. We check, you can notice that T1, T2, T2, T1, T2, T2. So, same transaction performs all the three operations on A and this is applicable on B also. Okay, since on each data item, same set of transaction performs the all the three operations, we can say that the given non-serial schedule is view serializable. That is, the given non-serial schedule is the view equivalent of its serial schedule.
Let us take one more example to discuss view serializability. This is for the given non-serial schedule. Okay. And in this non-serial serial schedule, there are two transactions are there. And both the transactions are performing operations on single data item. Okay. On this, we have to check which transactions are performing initial read, update, read and final write on Q. Because there is only one data item, right? So, on Q only, we have to check. Who performs initial read on Q? T1, right? Uh, then update read. Um, no transaction is doing because after write, there is no read operation. Okay. So, that's why it is nil. Then final write is performed by T1. Okay. There are two write operation, but final write is performed by T1. So, let us check the same thing on serial schedule. Okay. Now, we made the serial schedule, which is the serial schedule of this non-serial schedule. How we got this? Simply, we have to arrange all the operations in T1 followed by the operations in T2. And there should not be any overlap between the operations in T1 and T2. So, if there is no overlap, then it is known as serial schedule. Okay. So, we simply wrote the serial schedule on, and after that, we have to check either all the three operations are performed by the same set of transaction as done in non-serial schedule. So, when we check it, initial read is done by T1, no update read, right? So, it is nil. Then, final write on Q is performed by T2, okay? So, but here in non-serial schedule, final write is done by T1, but here in T, but here in this case T2. So, since there is a mismatch in operations performed in non-serial and serial, this S1 is not view equivalent of S2. So, it is not view serializable. Students, I hope you understand what is conflict serializability and view serializability. Thanks for watching.